Hello, my name is Isaac Caruso. I'm a 32-year-old muralist born and raised in Arizona. My entire life, the state has been my home. I grew up in Phoenix, I went to college in Flagstaff, and my artist studio currently resides in Tucson. I've also traveled a lot, created art all around the world, from the icy fjords of Svalbard to the hot barrios of Uruguay. But right now, I'm focusing on my most ambitious project yet, which is a 48-page children's book illustrated on walls across Arizona. Since December 2019, I've been creating murals that tell one cohesive story. They will be photographed, printed, and published as a book I'm calling Sam and Sarah. So join me as I recount my first year of this adventure, traveling across our great state, creating the Sam and Sarah Children's Book. The first step in our documentary is Ajo, Arizona, located in Pima County. This area has been the home of indigenous peoples for hundreds of years. The name stems from the Ahodaham word for paint, because they used to extract pigment from the exceptionally red rocks in this area. Spanish settlers morphed the name of this land to the similar sounding word Ajo, which is Spanish for garlic. After a productive first day with ideal weather, my dog Gustavo and I got some rest in the van. This page depicts the scene where Sam and Sarah fly with a red-tailed hawk throughout the southwest and search for Sarah's home. We left town to gather more supplies back home in Tucson, and then it was off to Camp Verde. I started off the piece by laying down a background color, and then I did some outlining. The town's director of public art secured a sweet trailer for us to stay in, which was helpful because in the winter, Temperatures can drop well below freezing in this town. So I fired up my Coleman grill and made some food to keep me energized over the next couple of days. Before leaving town, Lindsay and her boyfriend Jan were nice enough to invite me over so I could ask them why they call Camp Verde home. So I coordinate all the community arts efforts that are going on here in Camp Verde, um, having to do with any public art project. Um, we're working on getting a new community arts alliance together. So we're just trying to bring more people to the Verde Valley, trying to let the community express themselves through art. So yeah, I'm really excited to have a new mural here. Um, so I'm from France, uh, so I came to the U.S. to study. So I actually did not know about Camp Verde until uh, I was invited over for one of the festivals, the one in Pecan Festival. They were, there was a new company that was about to open in town that was working with local farmers to save the, the Verde River, which is um, kind of like the main attraction and the pride of the people around here. And coming from a rural town in northwestern France, for me, it's not really been a problem uh, to adjust to life here because it's very similar to how my interactions were with other people growing up. Um, so I'm loving it here and um, it's, you know, although I do miss the city life a lot, uh, I really enjoy uh, this small town feeling that we have around here. Despite it being so cold, I found the people of Camp Verde to be incredibly warm. They were very hospitable, offering me a place to stay, and Goose was sad to leave the warm trailer. I'd recommend this place to anyone who wants to escape the heat of Arizona, and after you obtain a permit from the Forest Service, please check out Fossil Creek, it's amazing. And cruise around to see if you can find this piece of the Sam and Sarah project. Next up, Tubac. The area around this town has been populated by people for over 11,000 years. The Spanish conquistadors settled this land, making it the oldest European settlement in Arizona. And it was part of Mexico until the U.S. took it in 1853, and after Arizona was incorporated into the Union in 1912, it was the home of many farmers, miners, and ranchers. 
It has become a quiet artist colony with population just under 2,000. The two back center for the arts was kind enough to give me space to paint a 20 by 10 foot wall on the south side of their building, depicting the scene where Sam and Sarah run down South Mountain into the valley where Phoenix is below. After completing the mural, the center's artistic director was kind enough to let me interview her and ask her why she calls two back home. Oh, introduce yourself, please. Sure. Hi, I'm Karen Lee. I'm the artistic director at Two Back Center of the Arts. I came to Two Back in 2010. I started as part-time person here at the Arts Center and worked my way up. I actually left for two years because I wasn't sure this was my home. I needed to find a new adventure. And um, yeah, I missed it so much. I kept coming back to visit friends and I decided I need to go back to Two Back. I'm an artist, I'm a visual artist. This town is full of art. Art is my passion. I love helping the other artists that participate here. And um, it's just a great place. It's a community, very supportive, very friendly people. It's all about the art. Goose and I traveled back up to central Arizona to the town of Cottonwood. This town of approximately 11,000 arose to provide goods to the nearby mining communities of Jerome and the soldier community of Camp Verde. Their local government got me in touch with Red Rooster, a delicious breakfast and lunch restaurant on Main Street. On the wall, they asked me to paint. There was actually an existing mural that had seen better days. So while I don't like painting over other people's work, it is part of the mural process and a nice gentle reminder that nothing is permanent. All right, day two in Cottonwood, about to check out of the Lux Verde Hotel. And go hit it, it's 6.30 in the morning and we got Gustavo in full winter gear. Um, let's go. What started out as one mural became two. Both murals are sequential pages of the book depicting Sarah leaving the water for land in search of her mother's home. After the two murals were complete, one of the super nice waitresses at Red Rooster let me interview her and her family and ask them why they called Cottonwood home. First off, tell me your guys' names. My name is Amanda, this is Hunter, and this is Michael. Hey guys. Um, so I want you guys to let me know why you guys call Cottonwood home. Well, we moved here about five years ago, um, stayed with a friend, and then we ended up coming out to Old Town and found a beautiful apartment. and. It's just an amazing place to be. There's a lot of business, there's a lot of job opportunity, and... It's a great place to raise a family. You get to know everybody around you. You know, it's, it's beyond, beyond friendship at a point. It's, it's, it's family. Conwood is a great place to visit. Not too cold in the winter, nor is it too hot in the summer. And it's also begun to garner national attention for its wine, with artistic luminaries like Maynard of Tool creating food and vineyard operations in the small town. All right, so here we are today in Tucson Mall, where the nice people at Saka were kind enough to give me an office in Catalyst, which is like a thinker, worker, tinkerer space with engineering, arts, 
music, all kinds of creative amenities. Um, that's why I've been working on this project for Sam and Sarah. Uh, I guess we'll start from the beginning on my whole story. Grew up in North Phoenix. It's definitely a very clear-cut ADD case from the get-go. <laughs> Didn't pay attention much in school. Uh, you guys know the story there. When I got a little bit older, around, you know, high school age, I, I really got into graffiti. It's pretty much all I did. Uh, when I was in high school, I then kind of naturally took an interest into arts, and I made a portfolio, and I made some pieces that I thought were cool, and that's when I actually started to consider, hey, hey, maybe I'll be an artist or a graphic designer, be more practical. My dad kept on nagging me to, to enter into this contest for uh, kids with disabilities, and my ADD kind of fell into that category, and it was a big deal. It was like uh, through Volkswagen of America um, and the Smithsonian, you'd get to have your work displayed at the Smithsonian. I, I didn't think I'd actually get in, but then sure enough, I did. And it was an amazing experience. I got to shake hand with the Kennedy, and there was a reception on Capitol Hill, and that's when I finally started to think about this maybe being like a legitimate career path. Meanwhile, you know, I was still figuring out what to do with school, so I figured I'd go for graphic design. It was pretty easy in the first year, second year not so much. I went to ASU and it was definitely a very challenging program and not a lot of people actually got accepted into it. And I was pretty frustrated because for the first time I actually really had to try out something. And um, while that was happening, me and some friends just decided to go hitchhike to Chicago one day to go see a concert. And that was a pretty life-changing experience because that's when I realized I had a real travel bug. After that, um, came back to ASU and tried really hard and didn't get into the program. And uh, that's when I wasn't sure what I was gonna do from that point out. Off next to the seat of Pinal County, of course, I'm talking about Florence, Arizona. The area was once inhabited by the Native American Hohokam tribe, who are ancestors of the present day Tohono O'odham tribe. European settlers flocked here for its cultivatable land and silver, and it's also the final resting place of Charles de Briel Poston, who successfully lobbied Arizona for statehood. It's quiet, historic, and extremely friendly. It's a small town that really embraces its western frontier vibes. The Pinal County Museum, which boasts an amazing collection if you're a history buff, I'd recommend it, was the institution kind enough to invite me to come paint here, and they also showed me around the Windmill Winery. Before leaving town, Kathy with the Pinal County Museum told Goose and I why she calls Florence her home. Three, two, one. So my name is Kathy, and if you can't tell by my accident, I'm from New York City. I came here in 2008. My dad had bought a historic adobe, and it was his dream to fix it up and repair it. So after he passed away, I thought, well, we had always planned to do this, so I'd come out here and fix up his house, and I would go back to what I called then civilization. And as you can see from our main street, I was just sitting right out there at the fudge shop having my coffee. I met the chief of police, I met the mayor, I met people from all over the community. And everyone here was so nice to me, which I was not used to in New York, that I decided I was going to stay. And it's 2020 and I'm still here. Nestled in a discreet valley, the Copper Corridor is Queen Valley. They have a huge golf course in the middle of the town with a nice, beautiful lake. We painted a scene from the book where Sam and Sarah start to walk through the desert as the sun rises after recently meeting one another.
So uh, I messed up this interview when I pressed the wrong button on my phone to record, but all you really need to know is Carol and her husband are the sweetest people on planet Earth. They gave us a warm bed to sleep and invited the community out to watch me finish the mural and also fed me and just great people. I absolutely loved my stay here in Queen Valley. Way out in the Superstition Mountains is a town that seems frozen in time. Past some breathtaking bridges and gorgeous mountain passes is the town of Miami. It's one of the few towns I've encountered in Arizona that has kept its settler heritage alive and on display for all to see. Even if a few of the beautiful buildings are starting to see some wear. Things really started to boom in Miami right before Arizona became a state in 1912. The population steadily grew up to 8,000 and it was even deemed the copper capital of the world at one point in time. When I arrived, I noticed there were quite a few stray cats and also these really cool little murals of them everywhere. I asked the local what that was about, and apparently they used to let stray cats roam free in the town to eat up the rats before they got into the mine. So this is a way to kind of commemorate those cats who ate the rats generations later, as the felines still call home. So the town of Miami set me up with a fellow artist point of contact named Patty, who was very helpful to me and Goose, and I decided to ask her why she calls Miami home. My name is Patty, and I'm an artist here in Miami, and i um, been here about four years. Um, I love Miami because of the smallness and the, the community that kind of works with each other. Uh, work sometimes downtown in one of the stores down there, so we have a lot of traffic that comes just to see the antique stores and um, the, just the uniqueness of the town. bed and breakfast and uh, made a friend um, she's gonna tell us why she calls Miami home her name and what she does okay Miami <laughs> can I tell you yeah it's all okay. you yeah yeah like you freaking know. <laughs> uh, my Miami's enjoyable yeah uh, you can do a lot of things here uh, the Miami Vandals Football team is number one. Number one? Yes. Way better than Globe, right? Yeah, Globe Tigers suck. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but they do a big time. So after ASU, I had to move back home and really think about what I wanted to do with my life. And I decided I was going to keep on trying to get that degree. I went to NAU, which was a completely different environment from ASU. It's very hippie up there, very chill. Uh, it's Flagstaff, if you're familiar with that territory. I kind of found where I need to be, and I got my degree, and that whole redemption process was really fulfilling. Uh, but after I graduated, I had missed graffiti for like three or four years because I figured out I couldn't go out at night and paint and also do my schoolwork. I also do a lot more traveling, so I did this crazy thing where I got on hostelmanager.com and I put up my portfolio and I said, 
if you give me a place to stay and room and board, I'll come to you and paint a mural. And that's kind of the hostile culture works anyways. I got, you know, hit up by people all up and down the West Coast and then also randomly like Montevideo, Uruguay. So I went down there for a month and I painted and that was amazing because like, they don't care really what you paint on as long as you're good. It's copacetic. Um, when I came back to Phoenix, I didn't really shake that attitude and I actually got caught doing graffiti in Tempe. Um, and the reason why that's an interesting story is because I was also working on a grant for the city of Tempe at the time. And uh, this really brilliant lady who was their art director found out and she gave me a call and she's like, all right, Isaac, you can either try and be Banksy or you can do public art, but you can't do both. So you gotta choose one. And I, I went with public art. I was like, please let me keep this commission. And so that was kind of my trajectory from then on out. Also got involved with this awesome website technology group as a creative director. That whole ride was a lot of fun. I became a shareholder in the company. Meanwhile, trying to do these art grants, which were just getting more and more and more frequent. There became a point where I decided I couldn't do both. Like I just didn't have the time because I entered into this competition. Uh, well, I got accepted as a finalist and then all the best muralists like in Phoenix were my competitors. And it was for a national endowment for the arts grants. I just tried really hard to, you know, bring my A game and I wanted this prize because it was the biggest commission I'd ever seen or I have ever seen actually in Phoenix. And uh, sure enough, I got it. So at that point I realized now or never, sold my shares in the company became a full-time artist. All right, this one's a real treat. Flagstaff, Arizona. During the summer, it's some of the best weather. It's really cool. Um, a lot of pine trees, not typically what people think of our state. And it's also my alma mater, NAU, so I have a lot of great memories here. I was fortunate enough to connect with the Boys and Girls Club through their local arts department. Um, and this is the page where Sarah actually comes to our world for a story to tell. It's also a great opportunity to visit my little sister, who recently graduated from NAU as a nurse at Flag Medical. And I had to ask her, why do you call Flagstaff home? So here we have my little sister, Bella, and my brother-in-law, Johnny, and their kid, Lucy. This is our little child. Why do you call Flagstaff home? Um, I would say first thing is probably the community here. I think everyone's just so nice. We have all our friends here. Um, everyone's very welcoming here in Flagstaff. It feels great to live in a place where people come for vacation. It's home for us. We just got this new home and we'll be here for a while. Yeah. Now, you may recall back in Miami, one of the locals had a bit of a hot take on Globe. So I decided to pay him a visit and see what it was all about. And I'm here to say, I love this place too. It has an extremely well-maintained, beautiful main street. People are great. And they also let me paint a little piece right next to their public library for Sam and Sarah.
then I met the mayor of the town, so of course I had to ask him too. Why do you call Globe Arizona your home? All right, so let's see if I can get this right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're in Globe, Arizona. Just finished up the mural. I'm with Mayor Gameros, and he's going to tell us why he calls Globe, Arizona his home. I call Globe, Arizona my home is because I grew up here. I was born and raised in Miami, which is uh, six miles west of us. And I worked here my whole life. I retired from the fire department after 30 years and then ran for mayor four years ago. And I love this community. It's, it's everybody, uh, people are unique here. I mean, everybody knows everybody, they're friendly and we help each other out. And this is an amazing community. It's really a hidden treasure that eventually people are gonna find out about. And we wanna see Globe grow. So my transition to art full time was about three years ago and I've just been steady grinding ever since but it's also given me the opportunity to travel to a lot of places. I've painted South America, Asia, Europe. That was something that I really wanted to try and bring into my work. I also got a commission in Tucson, Arizona. And the reason why that's funny is because growing up in Phoenix, all I ever did was make fun of Tucson. I just figured I'd come down here, do my work, get out. But it turns out I actually like love it here. It's really, really nice. And uh, it was a commission that just basically entailed work in the morning and the rest of the day I didn't have nothing to do. So I decided to do this project that I've been thinking about for like 10 years called Sam and Sarah. And I finally, Got my laptop down, all my ideas that I've accumulated for about a decade, sketches, you know, uh, storylines, just everything, and tried to stitch together one cohesive story. And every day after work, I'd come home and sit on my dinner table and try and make this thing happen. And I spent all summer working on it, writing it, sketching the illustrations, and I finally got it done, got the story copyrighted. And, uh, you know, now I'm actually out here working on it. So, since then, last year in August, I've just been in contact with local governments all across our states, trying to find walls to paint and uh, stitch together about 50 murals that tell one cohesive story. The next stop in our adventure is Sierra Vista, Arizona. It's about 75 miles southeast of Tucson. It's the home of Fort Huachuca, and it's also the main economic and recreational hub of Cochise County. Now, how could I go throughout this entire documentary without talking about COVID? Well, it was a bit strange. Um, for example, when I came to Sierra Vista's public library, there was nobody in it. But the nice thing was that it gave me the opportunity to use some spray paint and let Goose frolic th free <laughs> throughout the uh, book sections. Before we left, I had to ask one of the librarians why they call Sierra Vista home. So tell me what you call uh, Sierra Vista home. Okay. Well, I originally called Tucson home. That's mostly where I'm from. But I moved down here when I got a job at this library. And I really fell in love with the city. Um, it's a small community, but it makes the work I do feel way more impactful. And I just, I'm really in love with the community that I work with and the hiking around here is beautiful. We're isolated, but it's not really a bad thing right now. And yeah, I really love this city and I encourage lots of people to come visit. 
The last location for the Sam and Sarah murals in this documentary is the geographic center of Arizona. Of course, I'm talking about Payson. It's that small little town at the bottom of the Mogollon Rim, surrounded by Tonto National Forest. And I gotta say, I found it really interesting because most small towns I went to um, aren't very flamboyantly political, but I saw a lot of people outspokenly supporting their left-wing or right-wing candidate. And I mean, we have an election coming up, so I guess that's to be expected, but I haven't seen it in any of the other small towns. Um, But I also found Payson to be very comfortable, and I got this project done in two days, one night in a van, and I had a really great time. As of October 2020, I've completed 23 pages throughout the far reaches of Arizona for my magnum opus. The travel and supplies has been mostly self-funded with a little help from a very generous online Patreon community. I'm still looking for spots to paint a few more pages of the book. And I look forward to completing this project and you can stay tuned too to watch this project evolve by visiting the project's website on samandsarah.org by going to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Sam and Sarah by searching for my YouTube channel or by visiting my Instagram at Isaac.caruso. This project has been made possible because of some very special people. Uh, Gustavo, my dog, has been along my side this whole adventure as we bounce around from town to town on our quest. Uh, My van, named Vanna White, has been reliable as transport and a home. Chris Montgomery has provided help with the custom music for the webisodes, and Max Shanley has helped out by editing the story. Uh, Sokka has given me a place to work out of while I compose the story, and of course, I gotta give a very special thank you to the local governments and towns that have given me places to paint. This is just the beginning of an idea becoming real, and I can't wait to show you the final published book.